Hello guys, I'm Dan Savoy and I'm here to tell you guys some facts about a living fossil. Its name is Tuatara and its scientific name is Svenodon punctalis. This reptile belongs to the family of Svenodontidae and belongs to the species of punctalis. This living fossil is sadly one of a kind but that's a claim the Tuatara can make. In fact, the Tuatara is one of the most unique animals in the world. It might look like a lizard, but it's really quite different. The Tuatara's closest relatives are an extinct group of reptiles around the time of the dinosaurs. Therefore, some scientists refer to Tuatara's as living fossils. Tuataras can live up to 100 years in the wild. A tuatara is 20 to 31 inches or 50 to 80 centimeters long and weigh about 1 to 3 pounds. Both male and female tuataras have a crest of spiky scales called spines down the center of their back and tail and male tuatars are larger than the females. The name tuatara is native Maori and it means peaks on back or spiny back. Tuatars have no external ears as lizards do. They enjoy cooler weather while lizards like it warm. And unlike lizards, tuatars are nocturnal, but their most curious body part is a third eye on top of its head. The eye has an iris, lens and nerve endings, yet it's not used for seeing. It's visible under young Tuatara skin but becomes covered with scales and pigment in a few months, making it hard to see. The unique eye is sensitive to light and may help the Tuatara judge the time of the day or season. The Tuatara is only found in New Zealand. In 1989, a group of Tuataras was discovered on New Zealand's Brothers Islands on one tiny 10-acre rock island. About 600 Tuataras live on a 5-acre patch of scrub vegetation at the top of the island. In 1990, it was initially decided that the Brothers Island Tuatara was a separate species called Svenodon gantheri. However, researchers later concluded that there is just one species which includes all Tuataras, Svenodon punctatus. Adult Tuataras are active at night because that's when their food is most accessible although they do come out of their burrow to lie in the sun. They eat mostly insects, especially beetles, but have been known to eat lizards, birds and bird eggs. Young tutoras usually hunt for food during the day to keep from being eaten by adult tutoras at night. There are two rows of teeth on the upper jaw and one row on the lower jaw that fits between the upper rows of teeth when the mouth is closed. The arrangement of teeth helps to tears tear apart hard insects. These small teeth are not replaced when lost or broken and older tutors have to eat softer food items as their teeth wear down. Males can breed every year, but females generally breed every two to five years. In March, male tuatars start sitting outside females' burrows, waiting for a chance to mate. They expand the larger crest of spines around the neck in the hopes of impressing the female. The female can store sperm for 10 to 12 months before laying 1 to 19 white soft-shelled eggs in nesting burrows. 
The eggs incubate in the covered burrow for 12 to 15 months before hatching, possibly the longest incubation period of any reptile. Sadly, this extremely long time gives predators, usually rats, plenty of opportunities to have Tuatara eggs as their main course. Tuatara hatchlings are on their own as soon as they break out of their egg, as the mother doesn't stay to protect the eggs or her babies. The hatchlings are more active than the adults and must quickly find food and dig small burrows for protection. Like some other reptiles such as alligators, the temperature of the nest where it incubated as an egg determines a tuatara's gender. It has been found that a difference of just one degree centigrade can change the young in a clutch of eggs from all females to all males. Since higher temperatures create more males, there is some concern about the effects of global climate change could have on the survival of tuatara populations. Like some lizards, a tuatara can regrow a lost tail, and tuatara shed their skin once a year. Tuataras used to inhabit the two major islands in New Zealand and numbered in the millions. Then, the first humans arrived in Polynesia, bringing rats and dogs that ate Tuatara eggs and youngsters. When Europeans arrived in New Zealand, they also brought more dogs and rats, as well as cats and ferrets. These introduced animals wiped out most Tuatara populations. The threat to Tuataras was so serious that in 1895, the New Zealand government fully protected Tuataras and their eggs. Even with this protection, Tuatara populations continued to disappear as rats reached one island after another. The most recent extinction of an island population happened in 19. 84, when rats killed all the tuatars on a 25-acre island in just six months. Recent studies have confirmed that tuatar populations on islands without rats are much larger than populations on islands with rats. Today, tuatars survive on just 37 tiny offshore and mainland islands in New Zealand. The New Zealand Department of Conservation launched a recovery program for tuatars in 1988. The program aims to stop the continuing extinction and help tuatars threatened by rats. Hatchlings are raised by biologists until large enough to survive in the wild, a process called head starting. They are then released onto rat-free islands. This new hope for tuatars is good news for other species too. Restoring natural habitat for tuatars helps kiwis, several seabirds and lizards and a large flightless insect called the giant weta. These animals had also been harmed by the rats and other introduced predators. Okay everyone, that's it about this wonderful prehistoric Lizard. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to like and click that subscribe button. So until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.